Have you ever been in a situation where you're surrounded by people whose faith isn't very strong? And if you've been in that situation, has that challenged your own faith? It can be hard sometimes when you don't have, or if you feel that you don't have a good example to look towards, or anybody to look towards that has a strong faith, and that can be challenging. Now we know that God gives us the Bible that has every answer we need. Any question we have, there's an answer. So tonight, I want to look at God's answer to this problem. And if you turn with me to the book of Numbers, we'll read the passage that this is found in. Numbers 13, starting in verse 27. Now this is talking about the 12 spies. And they have come back after searching out the promised land. And this is what they say. Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell in the sea along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants, and all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. Then we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak, came from the giants, and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. And quickly, if you jump over to 14, verses 5 through 9, Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord, nor fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. Their protection has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Now, I know that was a long passage, but to sum it up, Caleb and Joshua are the only people here out of the children of Israel who actually believe in God and have had their faith in him. Now, God wasn't real happy with that. If you continue in uh, verse 28 of chapter 14, Say to them, as I live, says the Lord, just as you have spoken in my hearing, so I will do to you. The carcasses of you who have complained against me shall fall in the wilderness, all of you who are numbered according to your entire number, from 20 years old and above. Except for Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, and Joshua, the son of Nun, you shall by no means enter the land which I swore I would make you dwell in. But your little ones, whom you said would be victims, I will bring in, and they shall know the land which you have despised. But as for you, your carcasses shall fall in the wilderness. So we see there, Caleb and Joshua actually benefited a lot in the end because they got to go into the promised land. And everybody else did not. That doesn't feel very great. But if we look in the rest of the Bible, are we going to find Caleb and Joshua and their faith? Is that the last we hear of them? And the answer is no. So tonight I want to quickly look at Joshua and Caleb both and see where they're at in the rest of the Bible and what we can learn from them. So starting off with Joshua, he became a leader of Israel after Moses. And if you turn to the book of Deuteronomy, at the very end, chapter 34, in verse 9, it will say, Now Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him. So the children of Israel heeded him and did as the Lord had commanded Moses. Not a huge to-do thing, but it does show that Joshua did become the leader of Israel. Now, similar things, you know, in Joshua, we have the whole book dedicated to him. Uh, in chapter 1, it's about God's commandments to him and what he needs to do. And one of the big things we know Joshua for is the story of the walls of Jericho. That's who we associate with that. He led the Israelites to conquer that land and take it out. Now, Caleb, I really like Caleb. Caleb, if you turn to Joshua 14, 
starting in verse 7 to go into 12, 14, 7 through 12. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these forty-five years, ever since the Lord spoke the word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, eighty-five years old. As yet I am as strong this day as the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how that Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. So if you look in 15, we won't read through it, but he actually goes, starting in 13 and on, to conquer this land. Which is pretty cool, because he was 85 years old. I won't be doing stuff that cool when I'm that old, just saying. Now, what does that mean to us? What, what can we look at this and bring out of it? Well, what I want to see in that key verse, verse 12 there, it says, Caleb says, maybe, or in other versions, perhaps the Lord will give me this land. He will be with me. And some people might look at that as a lack of faith. But the way I see it is Caleb saying, it really doesn't matter if the Lord gives this to me. I'm still going to do what he says, because this is just the earth. All this is going to pass away. And that's the kind of attitude we need to have in our faith, to say, this is all perishable. And that we need to look towards the goal in the end, which is heaven. Now, a couple of verses to look at. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who per are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. In Revelation 2.10, it says, Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life. 2 Timothy 4.6-8 For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. And finally, in 1 Corinthians 9, verses 24 and 25. Do you not know that those who run in a race, all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we, for an imperishable crown. To sum it all up, we need to keep our faith strong. We need to have a faith like Caleb and Joshua's was. And we need to look towards that goal that's in the end. And now, give your attention to him.